You're watching Swipe on the show this week. Testing the water, scientists try out shark-tastic tech to help keep you safe. Retro revival, could the Sinclair ZX Spectrum be about to make a comeback? And Game of Thrones, don't just watch it, now you can play it. Hello and welcome to Swipe this week from the Sea Life London Aquarium where we're hanging out with these guys. Now some of these sharks might look quite menacing but actually every year wasps and falling coconuts kill more people than sharks do. But that doesn't make encounters or the prospect of an encounter any less scary. This week Angela's been looking at some of the technology keeping humans and sharks apart. With more people moving into the natural habitat of sharks, scientists have been experimenting with new ways of preventing attacks on humans whilst protecting the animals at the same time. In Australia, a company has been testing the water with Clever Boy. The device uses sonar technology to spot shark-sized objects in coastal areas in a non-invasive way. When it detects a shark, the boy sends a signal via a satellite to lifeguards on the beach. Most of the existing technology for detection systems is based around tag sharks, um, but there's less than 5% of the sharks in the world that are tagged. Um, so this, this technique's all about finding the other 95%. In the US, researchers have been developing devices like shark bands that go on your wrists and ankles that repel the animals if they get too close. This magnetic technology in the shark bands, uh, when the shark comes near it, it creates a really unpleasant sensation for them, almost akin to uh, having a really bright light suddenly shine in your eyes. And it doesn't harm the shark, but it deters it, and uh, it usually doesn't return to the area after it experiences it. As much as it is important for us to protect people from sharks, it's really important for us to protect uh, the sharks from people as well. And in Cape Town, scientists are testing electronic barriers to exploit the super sensitivity of a shark's snout to keep them away. But can all this new technology create a viable alternative to current shark defence methods, like mesh nets, which are often criticised for harming marine life? As with any activity which takes you into a potentially hostile environment, personal responsibility is of utmost importance. Sharks are, after all, wild animals, and it's important that people give them the same respect due to any large terrestrial predator. However, personal safety can be increased by modifying our behaviour and taking local advice into account, and technologies may then add an additional layer of security. So keep your wits about you, but with smarter solutions, we're likely to see more environmentally friendly ways of keeping sharks and beachgoers safe. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Well, joining me now alongside these beautiful creatures is deep ocean explorer Dr. Verity Nye. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Now, we saw in Angela's piece there some of the technology that's being used to protect both humans and sharks, but how effective do you think it all really is? Well, I think the important thing to remember is that no method is going to be 100% effective at keeping sharks and humans apart. We're going into their realm, so there's going to be some interaction, and we can't stop the sharks from coming close to people entirely. But the great thing about the new technologies is it's a lot safer for the sharks. Environmentally, it's better. So where people have traditionally used nets or baited drums that can kill or damage the sharks and other marine life, you don't get that with the new technologies. Now, with tracking, yes. where on the shark's body is the tracker placed? Well, different research groups use slightly different methods, but typically they will place the tracker onto the top of the shark, onto the dorsal fin, which is the big pointy fin coming out of its top side. Does that ever cause any harm to the shark? Potentially, yeah. So it could damage the fin or just cause some minor irritation and it can also increase the drag on the shark as it swims through the water. I think the benefits from the tagging in terms of the information we get on their behaviour, where they are and how we can feed that into conversation far outweigh any potential discomfort or minor damage. A lot of these sharks will have damaged fins anyway because of mating or fighting behaviour. Mm -hmm. Well earlier this year scientists were able to use tracking to spot a great white shark relatively close to British waters. Is that something we could now start to see more of in the future? 
I hope so. I found that really exciting and the press really picked up on it and the shark was called Lydia. It got a lot of attention. There's been quite a bit of anecdotal evidence, stories about great whites in British waters before, but these have never been verified. So Lydia was the closest one that was a proper record that we could verify. So with this technology, with the tracking, it's certainly possible that we will become aware of other great whites coming closer to the UK and in British waters. So there's no reason why they can't be there. They can tolerate the temperatures. So do you think there are a lot more great whites around our coast than we think? I don't think there's swarms of great whites <laughs> heading our way, but there might be solitary ones that we just don't know about. And now we will potentially be able to find out about them. Great to talk to you, Dr. Verity Nye. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you. You're watching Swipe. Still to come, it's not just oceans we're exploring. We'll be in the Seven Kingdoms in our games review. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other technology news. The Sinclair ZX Spectrum could be making a comeback, well, sort of. A team began crowdfunding this week to manufacture computers based on the popular 1980s console. The developers exceeded their £100,000 goal within days. The Sinclair Spectrum Vega console is set to cost less than £100 and comes with a thousand built-in games. The entrepreneur who became New York's first tech billionaire says he's worried about his industry's future because of a lack of talent and he's urging people to learn to code. John Oranger started Shutterstock in 2003 as a way of selling cheap stock photos to businesses. The site now has more than 45 million photos and last year posted revenues of £149 million. A Russian startup behind the first double sided smartphone launched its follow up this week. The Android Yotaphone 2 has two touch screens one best for social networking, the other good for reading. It's a high end offering though. The £555 price tag makes it more expensive than the iPhone 6. And a British inventor's come up with a potentially life saving app for people with severe allergies or medical conditions. If a user suddenly needs urgent help, the Alert 5 application contacts five of their friends or relatives, telling them exactly where the person is anywhere in the world. Now, Game of Thrones fans, the TV series may have won you over, but what about the game? Pay close attention now, here's Lydia. So Game of Thrones Episode 1, I'm From Ice, is hugely anticipated because it's brought to us by Telltale Games, who have brought us such amazing games in the past. They made uh, The Walking Dead, they took The Walking Dead universe from the comics and the TV show, and they allowed us to enter this gritty, dark world and make our own decisions. And that's exactly what they're doing with Game of Thrones. So the brilliant thing about Game of Thrones is that right from the get-go, it gives you a very complicated decision, which you're going to be second-guessing yourself the entire way through. And that's what they do. They play with your mind and they really make you question your moral decisions. Now, it's also a, a massive treat for the fans of the series because it has the actors, the original actors' voices from the TV show. So it's a real exciting moment when you first hear Cersei or, or Tyrion speaking, as you know, it's the actual original actor. So Geometry Wars Three Dimensions is a super fast paced frantic game. It's a twin stick shooter and it's all about basically staying alive. You are constantly bombarded by enemies who are attacking you. They have their own different way of going about it and you've got to maximize your skills to get the highest points you can get. So that's a really good thing about Geometry Wars 3 is that it does bring in this whole social element. You know, you're always trying to get that one-upmanship with your with your friends because their score is always in the corner. You're always desperately trying to beat them and, and you want to brag about it, basically. Now, for fans of the series, it looks lovely. The HD remastering looks beautiful. They've done a great job with the graphics. Now, the Kingdom Hearts itself is a very bizarre concept. It's a mix of Disney and Square Enix's Final Fantasy characters. So it does actually appeal to all ages. You know, for the younger audience, you've got the Disney elements. It's, it's a real joy to explore your favorite Disney worlds. But for the older audience, it also has the, that Final Fantasy RPG. So there's lots of customization and leveling up and, and weapons and things like that. Well, that's it for this week, but don't forget to stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com and our YouTube channel. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.